Margareta Tosi Lesman, it is such a joy to connect with you once again. Thank you so much for sharing your story in our new book, Manifesting Love. You are so welcome, Andrea. Um, it's been an honor for me to, again, share my story and share it with the world. Um, this time a bit going deeper into what we will be talking about. So um, the honor is absolutely mine. Thank you so much. Well, it's true, you have shared in one of our other books, Time to Rise, and it was a wonderful experience of you. But this one is a little bit different. First and foremost, because you are sharing the actual process you went for getting rid of anger, developing more self-love, and ultimately creating a very detailed ritual to call forth your beloved with whom you've now been married for over seven years and you have a beautiful child together. So mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna mess around because I know that so many people want to manifest love, but so many people have also been where you have been. And that is, you know, carrying around energy that does block us from love and does end up dragging us into unhealthy relationships. So let's mm -hmm. just take it back to that moment where you were cleaning in your house, and there was a little outburst. <laughs> well, that's quite an understatement, but um, yeah, it was just a, a blind, blind rage when at that point I was cleaning my house, the vacuum cleaner did not move the way I wanted it to move. And I just yanked it so hard and just absolute fear coming out of my system and that when I just came to my senses and looked at the um, looked at the cord because of course the vacuum cleaner stopped working and even that got me more angry and I looked at the cord and I was so shocked and so surprised because the cord didn't only it didn't only stop at the cord but there was like the plug attached to it and there was like a piece of concrete attached to it. And this was like a new constructed house. We're not talking about a years 30, years 40s home, which is full of, of wood, like they constructed in, in the Netherlands. This was like a solid built like house. So that was, that was really, like my wake up call and saying, okay, this is not okay. The level of anger, the level of frustration, the level of like not knowing how to deal with my emotions was just at a peak at that point. And I was in my mid twenties. Um, and I just didn't know how to deal with like, how to feel or like following my heart or should I follow my my instinct should I follow what the, what the environment is is expected of me is expecting of me so it was like a beautiful internal turmoil and complete confusion complete confusion and where do you think that came from I mean because of course I know you now and you you do have a little fiery temper, but mostly you're just like light and love mm -hmm. and such peace and, and compassion. Where did that fury, where did that rage, that anger, where did it come from for you? Was it something you experienced in early life or what? Well, knowing what I know today, I can pinpoint several moments in life, but also in previous lives where this has like built up from and came from. Um, if, if we only want to stay like in this life, um, like how, uh, my mother has perceived her pregnancy, how the birth went. Um, and at that point in Holland, babies were immediately separated from their mothers. Um, so my mother gave birth. Um, I was being, uh, um, carried away by the by one of the nurses or the midwives uh, um, cleaned and everything and then you were put in into these nurseries until it was ready for your mother to feed you and so that was the moment like right after 
right after my birth. And I've done some regression healing on that because I've always had the sensation that no matter how many people I had around me, that I was always alone. Mm, mm. I was, and that has been a very, uh, like a red thread in my life. Um, and of course, whatever you don't heal, you get more of, and it comes back into your life. So when I was at the age of five, six, my my parents had a, had a short divorce for a few years because the situation in our home was not very healthy. And my mother decided very bold and brave as she is to uh, to pick up me, my my little brother, and we we moved house. So moving house is already quite a big happening in a young child's life. And on top of that, I broke my leg. So in the whole turmoil of moving house, I broke my leg, had to be in the hospital, and I stayed there for quite some time. So also there again, in structure, uh, where of course there were lovely nurses and doctors and stuff, and I still remember the name of a very lovely nurse. Um, but of course, yet again, that loneliness came into place. Yeah, so you were... You, you moved house, which means that you were then separated from your father. Then you end up in the hospital where you're separated yeah. from everyone. Yeah. And it's true. These sort of memories linger with us, even though intellectually we get it. Yes, parents mm -hmm. get divorced. Yes, they, you can't stay in the hospital with your family forever. But I love, I want to come back to that red thread because I know that it's very important in the work that you do today as a, a hypnobirthing practitioner, as a doula, as a magical birth keeper. I, mm -hmm. I do want to come back to that because I love the way that you are helping families now process, even while they're doing the, the pregnancy or the, the giving birth, you're helping them to process past experiences, whether in this lifetime or past lifetimes, so that you don't see them passing on this trauma that we know happens down, down our... our genetic line. But first, let me get back to this, this situation. You're in anger and fury. You rip the, the cord out of the wall. What was interesting to me about reading your story was when your mom showed up, you broke down and she was like, I was expecting this. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mother is, um, is quite phenomenal. I mean, I love my mother to pieces. Um, I'm very proud of her. Um, and of course, with her knowledge, with her education, with her background, um, she had already seen me struggling for quite a long time. But of course, I would like push that away or not let her in. Um, I would pretend that everything would be fine. Um, so, when so after I broke down and my mother happened to come by that afternoon which she normally never did like unexpectedly she would always call so when she came like at the door and rang the doorbell and I just looked around in my house and it was just I mean I, I couldn't hide it it was impossible that was like a mess everywhere and beside myself being a beautiful hot mess. <laughs> and she just came in, saw what had happened. She gave me a hug and just expressed like from the heart, like, hey, I've seen you struggling, but I just didn't know how to reach you. Mm. I didn't know what to say because everything that I would say would come off wrong. You would go in defense mode, you would push it away and that's absolutely how I would like previously deal with people that came too near. Yeah, but I love that she actually had something she'd been holding on to, a mm -hmm. phone number. And what was that phone number for? She happened to have uh, a little card. Uh, it had a phone number and two words on it. And in Dutch we say strijd en overgave. And that means struggling and surrendering and I really 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 wanted to pretend 
reading those words that they did not resonate, but I thought just surrender to it and just accept that they resonate as nothing else right now, exactly in this moment. And I called the, the phone number and it was the phone number of an amazing holistic uh, energetic uh, coach. And she was happening to hold this workshop about surrendering and struggling. And my mother accompanied me. So we went together. Beautiful. And I thought that I was like already like surrendering and that I could just ease into the workshop and that I could just go with it. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> but that was that was really your first step onto this personal yeah. development journey and really facing the anger, the emotions. Like you said, you just didn't know how to be with them. Mm. And that opened you up to energy healing and, and so many other things that ultimately mm. you're you're living that today and you're not afraid to experience the emotions the confusion the the whole whirlwind of energy that comes up and so i'm so grateful to your mom that that she she was holding on to that card for so long mm -hmm. absolutely it's um like i don't believe in coincidence if you want to talk to me about how coincidence exists you're more than welcome but <laughs> It's like a non, it's like a no brainer for me. Um, like what is the coincidence that she was coming at my door? On the exact that day that you like trash the. On that yeah. day, yeah. I really believe that in our feminine female ancestral line that we are so connected, mm. so connected. Yeah. So I feel that she on a certain level, even if she might not have it, present right like consciously um she knew that her daughter was not okay mm -hmm. and i'm so grateful for her that she showed up that afternoon for yeah. me and then without judgments like no judging not like what have you done or what what a mess or just immediately seeing what was happening and i still remember and and like cherish that yeah i think that's amazing what she did that day what a gift. So then yeah. you started to go on a journey of personal development and really looking at relationships. And I'll, I'll leave it there because we'll have to have something for them to read about, about the process that you did to really learn to love yourself. But mm. then there came a moment when you felt like, yeah, I love me. I'm amazing. I've got the space and I'm ready to manifest love. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how how did you come up with the ritual? Because out of all the stories in this book, Manifesting Love, yours is the most detailed description of a ritual or a ceremony, actually. Yours is more like a true ceremony. How did mm -hmm. you come up with it and, and tell us about it? And how long after did you meet the beautiful Daniele? Well, it, it, was, it, it was something so natural. Um, I've always been someone that loves writing. I love writing. It has accompanied me all throughout my life in simple things, in bigger things. I would keep diaries. I would have like these secret notebooks with my best friends and we would share our most intimate thoughts about it. But when I came to the point where I was um, like sitting in my apartment and just knowing that I was ready for for love again, but then the true love, like the love that I felt in my heart that was possible, the love that I wanted to receive because I knew I could give it. And so what I did, I just started writing again. I took a notebook, um, but then I just saw that the setting was not completely the way I wanted it to be. So I just start, started putting on some music. I uh, switched on some candles. And at a certain point, I saw myself in the mirror and I said, oh, hey, gorgeous. But you're just like in your like trainers and that. I mean, beautiful. But I had the feeling that this like would need something more. So I just switched on and I put on my most beautiful feminine dress and I did my hair, I did my makeup, just 
like very lightly, but just how I felt like the most beautiful feminine on this, on this planet. So I came back to my notebook and I started writing, but then really, really connecting with my heart and with my soul, knowing that I was ready for, for the love of my life and not just, just love really like the man that I wanted to receive in my life that would become my husband, the, the father of my children and the one that I would share the rest of my life with, but also someone that I could grow together with in all our challenges, because of course, um, we all bring them with us. And I just started writing. I wrote down what type of uh, uh, qualities that I that I was looking for. Now, how specific were you? I mean, were you saying that he had to be a certain height and a hair color, or a, a job no. or financial status? What did you What did you specifically write? No, it was more about like soul and heart level. Um, he had to be trustworthy. It had to be a family man, someone that really thinks that family comes first. Someone that I could trust with my eyes closed. Someone that would stand next to me and respect me for the person that I am. Someone that would make me feel the most beautiful woman in the world and someone that would carry me in a way that I wanted to be carried as the woman and as the creator that I am. And so it was not so much about he has to have money, he has to be a certain height, he has to have a car. It was none of that. Um, so the so when I had written down everything on my desire list, on my wish list, um, I took the piece of paper out of my notebook and I burned it in the candles. Hmm. Okay. Was that like because a symbolic? I that energy is um, um, is fluid. Like you, you, you let it go. You don't mm. stick on to it. You don't hold on to it. Mm -hmm. So sending out my wishes to the universe while burning the piece of paper um, and just accompanying the, the, the pieces, pieces of ash just up into, the, um, up into the universe, up into the sky and just saying, I know that I can trust the universe. I know that by now and I know that the universe will help me. Um, sending the right man on my path. Mm, I love it. And how long after was it that you met Daniele? Not even a month later. Really? That fast? Okay. That fast. I knew that the universe worked fast. <laughs> I didn't know that she worked that fast. I love it. Well, <clears throat> I know that there's a lot of, of juiciness that we, you, you share a little bit of in the book, but I think this is a perfect place for us to transition. I definitely recommend that if you are single out there and you are looking to manifest love, Margareta's story is very complete in her own journey and, and the ritual. Several of the other uh, stories that are shared in this book fill in other aspects of this manifesting journey. But I do want to come back to what we talked about earlier, and that is your work in the world now and how you're really holding a sacred space and providing a, a really safe container for bringing a new life into the world. Mm -hmm. and, and whether that's a home birth or it's in the hospital or a midwife center, you're really kind of this bridge between two paradigms. Mm -hmm. and, and that's allowing people, women and especially their whole families, but women to really own their pregnancy experience. Can you tell me some more about, about it? Oh my goodness. Um, I feel that everything that I've been doing in my life, everything comes together right now. Um, 
And so when I start working with, with a woman, um, I just put everything in place. And with that, I mean, like I make like a, a family map. I ask her about her, her, um, her parents, her brothers and sisters, um, about the relationship that she has, how her pregnancy has been up to now. Um, and immediately when I start again, writing down, um, her story or the map of her story of her life, I immediately see things where, where there might be blockages that we need to work on. And they might've been created in this life or in a previous life or connected with, with the female line or with the male line and working with them, of course, them being open to it. Um, and I like lately, I've been only attracting clients that are just like ready to, um, to work in that way. And it, it, it couldn't make me more happier because it allows them to take full ownership of their pregnancy, full ownership of the responsibility of carrying their baby and not the baby with the inherited baggage that they have carried before they've been able to release and to heal them. So it, it is um, quite groundbreaking in like um, letting go of ancestral baggage. Uh, preferably um, women would come to me if they are on their way of getting pregnant. Um, the world isn't ready for that yet. So um, I usually work with women during their pregnancies and I do family constellations with them. I do regression sessions with them um, on a note that it's very important to not just do this. It's important that you have a proper training, that you know how to do this with women that are pregnant because it, it takes uh, a different level of um, regression sessions in order to not uh, activate something that isn't ready to be activated. Got it. It's so highly specialized. And I think you are, you're literally creating a new class, a new space for yourself in the marketplace by bringing the wisdom of being a doula, a hypnobirthing practitioner, and all of the spiritual coaching that comes mm. with it. And that regression therapy, like it's, it's an amazing combination. And I'm so grateful that we get to hang out together and work together and, and share. Mm -hmm. So if, if folks will visit your website, they will learn more about you, how to work with you virtually or in person if you're in Italia, in Italy. But you also have some affirmations so that uh, as a, a woman is carrying the baby, she can start to really tune into energy, right? Mm -hmm. There are some amazing birth affirmations that you can download from, uh, from my website. There are some amazing birth quotes that can be downloaded for free on my on my website um, and just get in touch when when this resonates with you, when you are pregnant or trying to conceive and feel that either um, you haven't been succeeding because so that is can be a hurdle in with the infertility, that there is something energetically blocking. Um, so there are many ways in how I can approach um, like infertility as well as um, like releasing baggage during pregnancy, but even during birth. Like if there hasn't been the possibility to work together during pregnancy, it's even easily um, done or, or healed in the birth process. And also that is very, very, very powerful. Yeah, indeed. What a gift you are to the world, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you again for sharing your story in this book. I know that people are, are already, I've already gotten feedback since the book was released, that some wow. people have followed your method and they are done their rituals as well. So I can't wait to start getting responses of how people have manifested love. So thank awesome. you. Thank you again, my dear friend, for sharing. Thank you so much, Andrea. I love you. I love you too. 
So there you have it, my friends. This has been another exciting episode in our Ask the Author series. If you are ready to do some of the self-love and healing work that you need so that you can manifest the love of your life, then be sure to get a copy of our new book, Manifesting Love. And then, yeah, share with us the feedback and what you experience on your journey to true love. Until we meet again, my friend, please know that you are worthy of love and you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love.